Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have a function f which is from r to r. r is with usual distance. The given information is that f is continuous function. This is so much important thing we have. So with the help of that function, they have defined two sets a and set b. So in set a, which is subset of r2, which is defined in this way, f of x greater than y. And in B, exactly opposite thing, we have Y greater than F of X. Our target is to prove A and B are open sets. What we have to prove A and B are open sets. First, we will focus on A. First, we will prove that A is open. And after that, we will go for set B. So let us start with set A. We have A is equal to. So A contains elements of R2, which are in this form X, Y. The condition is y less than f of x. So we have to prove a is open, right? Uh, see, and the function f is also continuous given thing, but uh, already it is mentioned here, we can easily see. Let us go further. What we have to prove, to prove that a is open in R2D, where d is a Euclidean distance, right? So if you have set like this, suppose this is our set a. How we prove the set A is open if you take any arbitrary point and if we can find a ball around it which entirely lies inside a set then we say A is open. So this is obvious definition of open sets. But see there are other ways also to prove the set is open. We can prove A is equal to A interior then also we can say A is open or if we can prove A complement its clothes then also we can say A is open. Here I am going to use this technique. I am going to prove A complement its clothes. Let me mention that is to prove that A complement. So that means in the entire proof we have to write A complement, A complement everywhere. So for simplicity I am going to denote it by P. Right? Let us see what will be the definition of A complement. So exactly opposite definition, that means y less than f of x, exactly opposite will be y greater than or equal to f of x. And we have to prove it is close. Is close in R2D, right? Actually, our main target is to prove a is open. We are proving its complement is close. So we can say the set is open. So now let us focus on this part. We have to prove that a complement, that is nothing but set P. We have to prove it is close. How to prove the set is close? See, uh, we can prove the set is close by showing this one. P is equal to P bar. If P is equal to P bar, we can say P is close. Let me mention that is to prove that. That is to prove that P is equal to P bar. So here we have to prove these two sets are equal. How to prove two sets are equal? See, if we can prove a subset of B and then we prove B subset of A then we say both are equal. So here also we have to prove the first set is subset of second and after that we have to prove the second set is subset of first then we can say both are equal right. So what is obvious thing we know that the definition of P bar is P union P dash that means set P and set of limit points of P if you take union you get P bar so obviously P subset of P bar. So clearly, clearly P is subset of P bar. Let me call it as 1. So the half part is done. Now we have to prove that P bar subset of P. So let us start to work on it. Let me remove this part. So we will have some more space to write. Okay. Okay. It is not required now. Uh, yes. Let us use this space to complete the remaining part of this proof. Okay. So now we have to prove P bar subset of P. Let us take one point from P bar and we will prove that it is in P. Then we can say P bar subset of P. Let us take one point. Late. Actually P is subset of R2 right now. So we will have a point like this. Let me call it as AB belongs to P bar. So we have a AB belongs to P bar and we have to prove that AB belongs to P. Then we can say P bar subset of P. See. AB belongs to P bar that means AB lies in a closure of set P. So we have already familiar with one that result 
if you have let me show here huh? so suppose such p we have and suppose there is one point in closure then we can find a sequence we can find a sequence x1 x2 and so on which converges to that point a or whatever that point get it so here also we have a point from closure of p here also we can find a sequence of points of p which converges to that point so let me mention here therefore there exists a sequence okay so the sequence will be in this form x n y n since we are doing all these things in r2 getting now in r2 so that's why we will have the sequence like this in or sequence of points of set p we get a sequence of points of set p such that such that that sequence x n y n converges to that point a b a b so this is so much important thing we have got so let me call it as two this is the second statement we have right let me remove this part so we can use it to uh, complete this proof okay so here here basically we have taken a sequence x and y of what of points of set p so therefore that x and y belongs to p for all n belongs to set of natural number it is true for all natural numbers getting so we we have collected points from set p and we have formed a sequence so that's why each member of that sequence is a member of p see if you have any points from p definitely it will satisfy the definition of p what is definition of p definition of p is this one and so x and y and also will satisfy this uh, condition getting so it will satisfy the definition of p this one so let me write therefore y n greater than or equal to f f of x n right by definition of p this point lies in p so it will satisfy the condition of p and we got this one and again it is true for all n belongs to set of natural number right i am going to do a very small thing that is i am going to shift f of x n on this side so what will i have y n minus f of x n greater than or equal to 0 n belongs to set of natural number so now it looks better ready it looks better for me so let me call it as 3 so the second third statement we have so let us go back to statement number 2 so what we have written here the sequence of r2 this is a sequence in r2 right two components are there it converges to this point which is in r2 let me use here from 2 from 2 what we have that sequence x n y n converges to a b see in the real analysis we have already seen one result if you have a sequence in r2 which converges to a b then the first component x n converges to a and the second component y n converges to b so let me write here so implies that x n converges to a and y n converges to b okay uh, see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further see the, here they have given so much important thing that is function f is a continuous function and we haven't used it so let us use that thing that f is a continuous right so let me mention here but f from r to r is continuous so the function is continuous so we have some results right so if the function is continuous we have a sequential criteria of continuity that means xn converges to a then f of xn converges to f of a so that result i can use here xn converges to a already we have as well as the given information is function is also continuous so by that result what can we write f of xn converges to f of a right and let me write as it is y n converges to b right y n converges to b uh, let us subtract okay let us subtract let uh, let us recall one result first if x n converges to x and y n converges to y then x n plus y n converges to x plus y right x n minus y n converges to x minus y so such results we have algebra of convergent sequence so that thing i am going to use here so we have two sequences f of x n and y n f of x n converges to f of a y n converges to b 
so if you subtract so therefore y minus f of xn will converge to will you tell me it will converge to which point obviously it will converge to sorry here y and i should have y and converges to what b minus f of a the first sequence is y so that's why i wrote b first and the second sequence is f of xn that's why i wrote f of a later right so a, y minus f of xn converges to b minus f of a but see but but see from 3 but from 3 what we have y n minus f of x n is greater than or equal to 0 for all natural numbers right for all n belongs to set of natural number that means we have a sequence of non-negative real numbers let me show here in a diagram you know that on a real line we have a 0 at the middle here we have a negative numbers and on that side we have a positive real numbers so if you have sequence of points of positive real numbers or non-negative that means you can take 0 but you cannot take negative so if all terms of a sequence lie on this side you cannot have a limit on this side that means you can, if you have a non-negative numbers then their limit cannot be negative getting so uh, this sequence is non-negative real number so its limit cannot be negative that means obviously it is greater than or equal to zero so let me mention here so therefore therefore b minus f of a greater than or equal to 0 let us shift uh, f of a on that side so b greater than or equal to f of a but you remember this is condition of set p and this a b satisfies the condition of set p actually i have removed the definition of set p here you can go back in this video and you can check what is the condition of set p and point a b satisfy the conditions so therefore we can declare a b belongs to p basically we started with a b belongs to p bar and we proved a b belongs to p so let me simply mention here therefore a b belongs to p bar implies a b belongs to p so therefore p bar subset of p uh, let me remove this part so we will have some more space to write so therefore we can write therefore p bar subset of p this is statement 4 see in statement 1 we have already stated that p subset of p bar we are getting p bar subset of p so we can say both are equal so therefore from 1 and 4 both sets are equal p is equal to p bar but you we can say this is definition of closed set so therefore we can declare p is closed in r2d where d is a euclidean distance right so p is closed in r2d so p means what p means a complement so a complement is closed in r2d so if the complement is closed that means the set is open so therefore a is open in r2d so finally we proved the given set a is an open subset of r2 okay in with a usual uh, euclidean matrix so in case of set b we have a same thing just condition is different getting so in the same way we can prove the set b is also open subset of r2 so let me mention simply similarly similarly b is also an open set in r2d so in this way we proved the given sets a and b are open sets in r2d where d is a euclidean distance so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you